from the Fox 5 studios, this is the Red Zone Sports Show. It's a football game many people have circled on their calendars. The Ninth Island Showdown, Hawaii versus Vegas. A battle for the Golden Pineapple. Friends, family, tailgating. The Chuck Wagon, of course, putting on a show for all of Las Vegas in the Ninth Island Showdown. And of course, the sweet, sweet smell of two wins in a row. Hey, it was a great Saturday at Allegiant Stadium. It's awesome to be at home in Allegiant to get that pineapple, get the pineapple to the defense, get the game ball to the O-line. Um, man, I hope they enjoy the heck out of it because they deserve it. They work the tail off. Rebel Nation deserves it. Um, this is a great home place. We got a bunch of recruits in town, so shoot, man, I'm fired up. You may not know it, but I am. <laughs> And it's awesome to see so many Polynesians on the UNLV football team. This win meant a lot to these island boys as we sit down with UNLV starting center Lee Fatanu, who calls him and Cam Friel the Hawaiian Airlines. Uh, me and Cam have a thing going on with the Hawaiian Airlines because Hawaii boy to Hawaii boy. And if Naya catches the ball, it's another Hawaii boy. So all three Hawaii boys touch the ball. And hey, it was all win, 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 wins this weekend in Vegas. Kevin Kruger and his new squad start their season 2-0 with wins over Gardner-Webb and Cal this week. We'll be taking a look back at their games and hearing from Coach Kruger tonight. It sounds like his new guys like playing at the Thomas and Mac. It's amazing. Um, I came from a smaller school. He came from a bigger school. So just being on the court and looking up in the crowd and seeing all the people smiling and stuff, it's amazing just to experience that and just be around it. It's just, it's just fun. Got loud in there tonight. Yeah, got loud in there. Yes, I'm so happy to see the Thomas and Mac back and packed. Miss seeing all you fans there last season. Well, I know you Rebels fans woke up feeling extra good today. A big weekend for UNLV athletics. The Lady Rebels have won two straight. UNLV football has won two straight. The Running Rebels have won two straight. And UNLV volleyball has won three straight. Pretty incredible, right? That just means we have a packed show with a lot to get to tonight. So first, let's head out to a Legion Stadium last night. UNLV looking to stack another win coming off their first dub of the season against New Mexico last week. And it was a wild start to the Ninth Island Showdown. First play of the game, Siobhan Cordero launches it 79 yards. Marner breaks loose and the Rainbow Warriors are on top quick. Shaky first start for the Rebels. A little confusion on the field. Freel unaware of the snap and the Warriors recover the fumble. Rebels get lucky on that turnover. Hawaii misses their 43 yard field goal and the Chuck Wagon he'll make up for the turnover. Chuck's just warming up tying up the game seven to seven later in the first Friel still trying to find his groove rolls right picked off by Corey Bethley another rebel turnover that would later lead Hawaii to kick a 32 yard field goal taking a 10 to seven lead. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Friel picked off by Solo Turner. Third UNLV turnover in the first quarter. But shout out to the Rebels defense playing lights out last night. Ricky Johnson, the sophomore DB, his first pick of the season. Shout out to the Texas boys on defense turning up last night. The turnover would later set up Danny Gutierrez to kick a 21 yard field goal. The GOAT, we are tied up at 10 at halftime. Rebels hitting that reset button at halftime. The Chuck Wagon comes out hot. 64 yard run would later set him up for his second touchdown of the night. Too easy for Williams, way too easy. Rebels take a 17 to 10 lead. Danny Gutierrez would later kick a 36 yard field goal as UNLV takes a 20 to 10 lead heading into the fourth quarter. The defense continuing to fight down the stretch. Cam Oliver, a great open field tackle as UNLV holds Hawaii to just a field goal. Warriors trailing 20 to 13 with 11 minutes to play. And hey, shout out to the local guy, Kyle Beaudry, once again, a beast last night, coming up with a huge fourth down stop racking up 10 tackles against Hawaii last night two minute warning and hey is is the Chuck Wagon tired do you think he ever gets tired I don't know if this kid ever gets tired the Chuck Wagon could run a marathon after a football game 47 yards to the house another huge game from the Chuck Wagon breaking Icky Woods 34 year old record with 38 carries and a career high 266 yards and three touchdowns a minute left in the ball game and Cord 
Cordero is picked off in the end zone by once again, Ricky Johnson, his second pick of the night, and that is it. UNLV stacking two wins in a row, taking down Hawaii 27 to 13, and parties with the Golden Pineapple. A big night from the defense, and Chuck says he's doing this all for his daughter, Kamaya. We just, it's all love, like our whole defense, we're a family. Um, last week, I got a chance um, to step up and I wanted to make the most of my opportunity filling in for AJ because he's a, a hell of a player. Um, so it was my responsibility, next man up. And um, we just go to work every day with the chip on our shoulder and nothing changes. Um, we practice hard and just want to win. I'm ready to go uh, have fun with my daughter. She's waiting for me. It's her first time seeing me winning here, and it's my first winning here. So, you know, it's going to be a good night. Just clear, uh, positive thinking tonight. You know, just we did what we were supposed to do all three phases again. That's what uh, we won as a team. So, doing pretty well, and uh, let's keep it rolling. Anytime I can get Kamaya on the rev zone, I will coach. But happy victory Sunday. Happy squat Sunday is what we learned last night. Was Kyle Beaudry, uh in there, 7 a.m., squatting 500 pounds? Yep, they're all they're, they're all here, ready to roll. They're all here. Are you are you squatting with them too? Does that happen? No, those days are those days are over. <laughs> no, five hundred pounds, yeah. coach. No, we don't load it up like that anymore. <laughs> maybe You're coach in there, We're not in like that. Yeah, maybe five. Maybe coach five. My weight staff. They're in there. That, not, not like that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> coach, how are you feeling? Two wins in a row. How is the team feeling after last night's big win? Good. I mean, it's good, good, good to stack a win. It's always good for the culture and, and the team to, to find a way to, to win, to do things that win. We've seen that uh, a couple weeks ago. We saw it last night a way to, to work together and find a way, even if it wasn't perfect, uh, very imperfect in a lot of ways um, offensively, but defense stepped it up, uh, especially a nice job. And then offense later in the, later in the game uh, did a nice job controlling the, the, the run game and uh, press it forward and find a way to, to outwork and finish and uh, find confidence in each other. So, Proud of them for that and excited for the opportunity as we uh, press into a, a week here versus top 25 team. Starting to go over the game last night, want to start in the first quarter, just Cam Friel starting to, you know, get out there and, and, and get comfortable with the, the botch snap, the loose ball, the two picks. How were you helping Cam early last night and, and what were you telling him and coaching him on the sideline? Well, I mean, it's just every opportunity for a true freshman to get out there and, and to have uh, have things happen and, and they maybe not go your way to be able to bounce back and, and mentally get yourself back into the game was really what we we're talking about you know an opportunity to, to try to clean the slate and uh and to start fresh and to be able to battle back into that and uh to go back to work i thought i did to get a good job it was uh not as clean as game we know that a lot of things we want to, um again resilient and and the conversation continues to go as far as growing and growing with that position especially the true freshman Tied up 10 to 10 at halftime. How important was it to tell your guys it's zero to zero reset? Let's go out there. Let's win this ball game and, and have a clean slate. Yeah, that middle eight scoring is a big deal. You know, last four minutes, that minute, that, that second quarter in the first of uh, first that second uh, second half are really important for us because there's a lot of momentum in there. There's a lot of uh, identity within those two. I thought we did a nice job in two minutes going into the going into the uh, into the halftime, wanted a touchdown. We ended up with a field goal and we came out and uh, really went in the locker room and, and, and said, hey, let's clear the slate, 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, clean some things up and go back to work and came out with a nice starting drive. And I think that uh, propelled us forward through the rest of the game, which was nice both uh, on, on all three phases, really, that started that second half. Coach, I could do a whole 30-minute show on your defense last night, but just quickly want to touch on Kyle Beaudry and, and his impact again last night. And Ricky Johnson, two picks. What do you have to say about your defense last night? Yeah, they're doing, they did a really nice job, again, uh, playing together, playing within the scheme, two takeaways, another one on fourth down on, on a turnover on downs, stopped the run. They won the point of attack. I mean, there's five of five. There's five chances out there for seven change defense. Um, which is always hard to put, put them in that situation. And they did a, a really nice job. They limited the legs of the quarterback. And then guys like Ricky or, Brand, or, or, or freshman and guys like Bodry have to step up and, and take a role. They have done a fantastic job. And so uh, really nice to see them all. All right, coach, we are focusing on the O line next. I know how important this win was for your guys, but it was a little more important for the poly guys on your team. We're going one on one with Lee Fatanu, who had an entire village come out to last night's game. We'll hear from him next. 
uh, me and Cam have a thing going on with the Hawaiian Airlines because Hawaii boy to Hawaii boy. And if Nahia catches the ball, it's another Hawaii boy. So all three Hawaii boys touch the ball. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. From the beautiful island of Oahu to the twinkling lights of the Ninth Island, Lee Fatanu is happy to call Vegas home. Leaf is one of six growing up in a big sports family in Waipahu, Hawaii, where football is everything in his culture. So my family is a big family, especially in the football background. My uncle played for UH, actually. He was a nose guard. And my uncle, Joe, he played for the Cowboys, which is, he also played for UH. So I think that's a really good background on my part. You know, I, they also helped me growing up. So I think when it comes to the culture piece, uh, that's just how it is, you know, like it, like everyone in the Polynesian culture really plays a sport. So I chose football and a lot of other kids do so. In Hawaii, families revolve their lives around sports, going to practice, games, and constantly driving across the island. Leaf tells me he learned his work ethic from watching his parents. I would say it's my parents. My parents, like seeing them get up every day and taking us to school and my dad going to work. As, as busy as we are, I see how hard they work and how much they sacrifice, especially for a family of eight. Um, you know, we're always on the go. Our schools are on different sides of the island. So I think like them working each and every day, coming back late, you know, just seeing them carry themselves really um, helped me to see that, oh, if they can do it, I can do it too. Leaf tells me he loves that there's so many Polynesians on the football team and that it's pretty cool to see a Hawaiian center snap the ball to a Hawaiian quarterback, Cam Friel. Uh, me and Cam have a thing going on with the Hawaiian Airlines because Hawaii boy to Hawaii boy. And if Nahia catches the ball, it's another Hawaii boy. So all three Hawaii boys touch the ball. But um, playing center, you know, you're at the center of attention, really. You're at the point of attack. Uh, you help out the offensive linemen, other guards, tackles. So you see a lot of coverage, you see a lot of fronts. But I think it really, really helps me because it makes me a better player, especially if I want to go to the next level. So. Speaking of his quarterback, Cam Friel, Leaf played a huge part in bringing Friel to UNLV. Yeah, so I knew him in high school. Like, he was a few years under me. So I, we danced together at um, some Polynesian dance group. So we danced together. So I knew him from there. And ever since then, like, I came to UNLV. We, get, we just kept in touch, especially when he... Uh, when it came to his senior year, he wanted to make the decision. He kept asking me about uh, what this program is like, so I kind of helped him. I kind of want to say I brought him here, so yeah. Hey, and I know Vegas has some great Hawaiian food here in the Valley, but what does Leaf miss from back home? Oh, I, it's not even favorite food. It's more of a restaurant. I miss Zippy's. Zippy's, hey, yeah. Yeah, Zippy's is so crazy. I mean, I miss that so much. I know my family's going to bring some, especially when they come in uh, this weekend, so. Can't, can't wait to eat some of that. So. Hey, I miss Zippy's too. What about his favorite Hawaiian artist? Ooh, Hawaiian artist. There's a lot, actually. I like a lot. I listen to Fiji. I listen to a lot of all those, uh, J-Bug, all them. So a lot of those artists, like, I usually listen to them pregame just to, like, cool out and just vibe. So, yeah. Leaf tells me it's his lifelong dream to play in the NFL and come back home to Hawaii one day to host camps and help the next Hawaii boys in line. Oh yeah, I for sure want to go back home, you know, give back to those who gave to me. You know, that's how I was brought up. I wasn't, I didn't have like a, a training thing. So I kind of learned off of those who came before me. So I kind of want to be that to other people back home. So, you know, it's always been a lifelong dream to play in the NFL, play on Sundays. So, yeah, I just want to take care of my family, you know, because they take taking care of me, you know, especially in a big family like mine. Like I want to be able to, you know, support them just like how they supported me. So. All right, Leaf, now I'm starving. I want Zippies too. Awesome. awesome people, awesome family. Glad I got the chance to meet his family and get to know Leaf a little better. And it is cool to see a Hawaiian center snap the ball to a Hawaiian quarterback who could throw it to a Hawaiian receiver. The 808 is just taking over this football team. Well, now it's time for UNLV to get ready for the 858, my neck of the woods. 23rd ranked SDSU is coming into town on Friday night and the Rebels will be looking to win three straight and keep stacking. We're breaking down the Aztecs with Coach Arroyo next. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5.
UNLV football will be working to stack three wins in a row this week when they host the 9-1 23rd ranked SDSU Aztecs this Friday at Allegiant Stadium. SDSU has been grinding out their conference wins this season. 5-1 in conference play, only one loss to Fresno State as SDSU is coming off a 23-21 dub over the Wolfpack last night in Carson, California. Trailing 20-21 with less than two minutes to play, Aztecs Matt Arzia kicked a 25-yard field goal to help SDSU secure another dub, extending their win streak to two. UNLV will be looking to stack another win this Friday when they host the Aztecs at 8.30. Welcoming back Coach Arroyo into the Reb Zone. Coach, how was practice different last week coming off a win? And how will practice in your in your mind be different this week? I know the players say nothing changes, but did you see a difference in practice last week? Yeah, we don't we don't change uh, what we do structurally very often and and, and, and it's what we try to get done. Um, that is definitely part of our process and, and the guys have reiterated that and they're they're doing a heck of a job with that. I think whenever you're coming off a win though, you, you always got a good uh, some steam and some wind at your back. And so it's always good to, to go into the week feeling uh, feeling like you came off a, a, a victory and, and to head into uh, try to stack another. And then this week is a, another chance. To try to go three in a row and uh, versus a really, really quality opponent. And so that's a, that's a big challenge and uh, I'm excited for our guys to uh, just get the week going. How big is this opportunity to host the Aztecs in your house this season and, and you're coming off two wins? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. You know, top 25 team coming back into Legion. We played a handful of those top teams this year um, already. We got our place, a um, couple on the road. And so uh, to have San Diego come in here and, and, and they're playing really, really good football to get them in uh, our, our spot with our fans and uh, a night like that's going to be exciting. Defensively, Coach, what does this team do well? Why are they so good on defense this year? Well, I mean, this team's been together a long time. They've done a, they've done a nice job as a program uh, for for recruiting recruiting. Uh, they've got experienced groups. Um, they play that they played the same defense and structure on on. on uh, it had a lot of continuity, and I think that shows up. You can see that in the way they're playing. Um, and so it's a great challenge. That type of continuity and experience is always hard to beat. You got to play really good football and, and sound football to get it done. All right, coach, hoping you guys can get a dub on senior night. I know the Chuck Wagon would love to see that. We'll see you in practice tomorrow and, and good luck this week. Sounds good. Thank you. Go Rebs. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. The Runnin' Rebels open up their season 2-0 under head coach Kevin Kruger, a big UNLV debut for the Rolls-Royce. Royce Ham Jr. recording a double-double with the career highs, 18 points, 17 rebounds. UNLV would lead 12-5 early against Gardner-Webb on Wednesday night, but the Bulldogs were barking back. Gardner-Webb in transition. Lance Terry with a bucket. Bulldogs lead 22-18. Hey, but we see you freshman Keyshawn Gilbert with the steal and the basket. Vegas native only freshman on the team this year you guys UNLV takes a 27 to 24 lead at the half there goes Royce Ham Jr. all over the court comes up with a big block hustles the other way and is there with the putback Ham is juiced up Rebels lead 39 to 31 and the Rolls Royce ain't slowing down Josh Baker to Royce Ham Jr. the Texas transfer is balling and a big happy 21st birthday to Bryce Hamilton this week he was lighting it up down the stretch Bryce Clutch Hamilton is really his name. He helped his guys seal their first win of the season, 64 to 58 over Gardner Webb. Hamilton led the team with 22 points, four rebounds, and an assist and a steal. How did that birthday dub feel, Bryce? You no, know, it's my birthday, so you know, getting that win felt great. Uh, you know, we play well. You know, we play well as a team. You know, even though we didn't have our best game, I felt like we showed a lot of fight and we just found a way to win. Yeah, I definitely want to try to just keep being consistent, uh, doing whatever, doing whatever it takes to uh, the team need me to do to win, and uh, just helping my brothers out any way I can. Uh, like like Bryce said, it's uh, not nothing new. I come in every day. I work, and I just try to be humble and just continue to just help my brothers out each and every day. And here are the top five plays from UNLV's 55 to 52 dub over Cal last night. Two gritty wins for UNLV this week. Donovan Williams with the handles. Awesome out there. Keyson Gilbert to Royce Ham Jr. Coach Kruger has praised Gilbert this week. The only freshman on the team ballin' with the fifth year seniors out there. 
And we got to see Jordan McCabe's debut last night. The senior transfer from WVU put up seven points, one rebound, and three assists. UNLV playing tough defense down the stretch, only allowing two points in the final 230 of the game as Coach Kruger is ecstatic to win two straight. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. They're excited. They're excited. I mean, very easily could have gone the other direction, just like Wednesday. But uh, it's, it's getting them battle tested. I, I don't think to end up winning both games, I'm not sure if we could have scripted it any better. You know, uh, 10 new guys, nine transfers uh, to go through these battles together. And as you guys know, the non-conference schedule doesn't get easier. So uh, to have these moments where you know, you looked, I looked down the bench there at the end and they're all eyes on me. I mean, they all want to go back in there and fight and compete. And uh, there's just a lot of security and comfort that goes from doing that. But uh, if we weren't in two knockdown games, drag them out games, I, I'm not sure if we'd know as much about each other. But no, we're, we're, we're not going to take any wins for granted. We're excited. Uh, we're going to take a deep breath, though, and then uh, get ready for Monday. Pretty, pretty uh, quick turnaround. Just an awesome weekend here in Vegas. Let's keep it rolling. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Thanks for watching Fox 5 News. Watch us live wherever you are on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.